Hey guys, what's up? I'm David. Welcome to the build guide of my outdoor whoop. This whoop has had a lot of interest since I showed my first videos about it. And for anyone who wants to build it, here's a small build guide that can help you through the steps of putting it together. So what is this whoop built for? I actually like canopy cruising, cruising between leaves and branches and going into a forest and just cruising around here with my whoop. It doesn't always need to be fast. Sometimes you just want to fly smooth and slow. So when I tried to do this with a standard all on one board with the 25 milliwatt VTX and the SPI D8 receiver, you lose RSSI and video reception pretty quickly. And I was actually afraid to fail safe somewhere up high in a tree and lose my little whoop. So I wanted a whoop that was reliable and that had a better VTX. And I came up with this. This one has the XM receiver, which isn't all that amazing, but it's more reliable than an SPI D8. And it weighs only a gram for the VTX. I did go with the TBS Unify Pro 5G 8 Nano because it goes up to 500 milliwatts. It uh, really helps when flying around trees and leaves and stuff like that. So let's take a closer look at my whoop, where I've placed my components, why I did that and how I wired them up. But first, I'm going to show you something that's really helpful. If I don't get a wiring diagram with an FC or a component, I just print it out. I search for a picture or a wiring diagram. I also got one for the TBS VTX. I got tons of these for every component I use. It's just so easy to have laying right beside you when you're soldering things to check if you're soldering to the right pad and everything. I used to use my smartphone or a tablet but the screen goes out every 30 seconds or a minute and you have to swipe across the screen to unlock your phone or something like that. This is just, yeah, it's there and <laughs> it's easy. Yeah, I'm gonna grab my drone. I got a note, I already took the camera off as you can see because this one is getting an upgrade. I'm going to put the Runcam Nano 3 split on this build because I wanted the HD footage. When I go canopy cruising, it's a little bit more fun to watch HD footage. Anyway, let's start out with the frame. In the original build of this drone, I used the Beta FPV 1S Pro frame, but its battery bay was broken, so I had to keep the battery in place with a rubber band or a battery strap, which added weight and it didn't keep the battery in place as well as I wanted to, so I replaced it by this. This is the Mobila 7 V2 frame. It is a little bit lighter as the Beta FPV frame. And the Beta FPV frame isn't available anymore, so this was a good alternative for me. Next up, the FC. This is the Beta FPV 1 SF4 board, a version that comes without VTX and without the receiver, so that's exactly what I wanted. But unfortunately, this board isn't available anymore as well. There are some great alternatives, although I haven't tried them yet, but these boards would work just fine as well. The iFlight Sussex Whoop F4 board, which comes in at 5.4 grams and is available for about 30, 40, 45 euros on Banggood. It already comes with a VTX, which does 25 and 50 milliwatts, but you can desolder it and solder your own VTX to it. Or you can go with the JH EMCU Play F4 all-in-one, which comes in at 3 grams, which is incredibly light, and comes in at 38 euros on Banggood. I'll try and put links to all of the components in the description down below, so you don't have to look for them. You can just click the links. They are affiliate links, so if you buy something from them, you would help me out. I get a small commission. It doesn't cost you anything, but I would be very, very grateful. I've placed the VTX in the back here. I've used double-sided sticky tape to attach it to the frame and some dental floss to keep it in place. Dental floss is very light and very, very tough. It won't come off easily. It's incredibly strong. Only downside to this frame is that the VTX sits very, very close to the propellers. I cannot use any other propellers except these HQ 40 millimeter props. If I use the Genfan props, which have a lot taller hub, the propellers actually hit the VTX. You could solve that by using a couple of layers of sticky tape on each other. But I like these propellers so much that I don't think I am going to swap them out. Now for the wiring. If you're using another FC, it doesn't really matter. All of the pads 
that I am going to show you here on the FC are also on all of the other FCs, but they will be probably in a uh, different place. So you would have to look at your pinout and connect the right wire to the right pad as you would normally do. So from top to bottom, we have our smart audio pad right here, which goes up to TX1 on my FC. Underneath it, we've got our video in on the VTX, which comes from the video out from the FC. Underneath that, we have two empty pads. These were from the camera. I already desoldered it. Underneath that, we've got our ground for our VTX going to the ground on the FC. Underneath that ground, we've got a 5 volt pad going into the 3 to 13 volts in pad on the VTX. So that gives you a wide range of voltages, voltages it your VTX can take, which gives you uh, a lot of possibilities to wire it up. And it's also usable with a 1S whoop. Awesome VTX, this one. You can really, really recommend it. On the bottom, you can see, I'm gonna put this out of the way. On the bottom side, we got our XM receiver. This isn't an XM Plus with the two antennas, this is just an XM receiver. It's extremely cheap nowadays and it, it gets you decent range. I mean, it's not the best, of course, but for my purpose, it's enough and how does the wiring look on the XM? Well, from left to right, we got our ground right here. We got the five volt pad in the middle and we get the S bus pad on the right. And on this FC, we have got the ground on the bottom left here. Next to it, we've got the five volts. And on top here, this is our S bus. If you're using a FreeSky receiver, always try to use the S bus. That is the pad that is inverted. Otherwise, you would have to invert your pad in the CLI and yeah, that could give you some headaches. It's just so much easier if you use the pad that was meant for it. If you are wondering why my FC is so shiny, I use nail polish to protect it from water, like when landing on damp grass or something like that. You can solder through it. it turns a little bit brown, as you can see here, and soldering is a little bit more difficult, but you can, so I use nail polish to protect my FC and I already detached the motor plugs and direct soldered my motor wires to the FC just to save a little bit of weight. And if you're wondering on how to remove your motor plugs and direct solder to your board, I will put a link to a video I already made about that right here in the corner. While I'm doing this build video, I'm giving my drone a couple of upgrades. One of them was the frame next up is i'm going to be replacing the camera this is the cadex and which is a 1200 tvl camera i really like it it's an excellent camera but if you want to use your footage on youtube it's a pity that it isn't hd so i am actually going to replace it with the run cam split 3 nano light which is this one So if you already have a Mobile A6, this will be cheap if you want to do this. This is the way it comes. Yep, you get a free unboxing with it. Let's just zoom out here. All right, that's, that's a little bit better. So what's in the box except foam? You get a card. These are extensions for your uh, video, your ground, and your power cable. Oh, and you get a connector, that's that's nice. So you can just solder up the connector to your board. Use the connector instead of direct soldering it, and you can remove it whenever you want to. So that's nice. I don't really use connectors a lot much because they just add weight. And when it comes to whoops, every gram counts. So I'm not going to be using this. You get a bag of nylon standoffs some nuts and some regular screws to screw in your camera come on focus you there you go i'm not gonna use any of that you do get what you don't get on the mobile s6 is this this is a retainer for your sd card 
which you would place like this. So in a crash, your SD card cannot escape on you. You would have to lift this, then press the SD card and it will come sliding out. I am going to use this thing because it's really handy not to lose SD cards. I'm going to remove the connector and direct solder it to the board. It saves a little bit of weight, not much. If, if you don't care about the weight, don't do it. I don't mind the extra work. So I'm just gonna see how I am going to place it in the board first. Because you've got these buttons you want to be able to reach. you got the SD card tray you want to be able to reach. I think I'm gonna go like this. This will also be the shortest route for the cables. Yeah, I'm gonna go like this. There's a lot of liquid tape right here, which makes it pretty hard to bend these wires, but okay. I'm just gonna start by snipping off the connector. There it goes, by connector. Then, this has gotta be the shortest wire. I do wanna say that I'm not gonna make these wires as short as possible because you would still have to be able to mount the DVR board on top of your SC and if you ever want to desolder something from your FC you would want to be able to put the DVR board beside your FC beside your FC like this so you can easily reach your FC. I am going to cut some of the insulation from the cables so I can pre-tin them. You don't need to cut off much. They're very small pads, so a very small piece of exposed electrical wire is enough. Maybe just a little bit more on this one. Yeah, that's about right. I've got a very small tip here. In my TS100, I will put a I will put the name of this tip on screen so you can find this tip if you want to buy it. You just start off with cleaning your tip, put a little bit of solder onto it. And breathe in the wires. Let's solder our DVR board and camera to the FC. Now the pads I am going to use is this one. This is the video in. That will be the yellow one coming from the DVR board. And here we have our 5 fold pad powering the camera. And next to it we have the uh, ground pad. I had to change my setup a little bit. So you can't really see what's going on. But first I'm going to dip my tip into the sponge to clean it. I'm going to add just a little bit of solder to transfer the heat a little bit faster i print in the wires and i print in the pads so here we go hope you can see this that's our video wire now i'm gonna do the 5 volt pad second going from left to right for me so let's see how that turned out yeah, that's pretty good so there's a little trick to putting this all together I actually use two and a half dampeners on each standoff because as you can see the USB port barely clears the battery. So what I had to do is, I'm gonna try and show you, uh, how can I show you best? The black part you can see right there is actually half of a rubber dampener. I cut two of these in half and I used them as a spacer. So first I've put in a half rubber dampener, then the FC is mounted in a complete rubber dampener, which you can see here. And then to have enough space between the DVR board, I'm just gonna zoom out here. And then to have enough space between the DVR board and the FC, because there are a lot of big components underneath the DVR board, I've used another set of dampeners. 
not cut in half just complete dampeners so when it's done it looks like this now the post doesn't go all the way through the dampener as you can see the posts are actually quite short here you will have free vibration dampening for your camera so there you have it my final product the upgraded version of my outdoor flying whoop which has the better VTX and a better receiver. When putting this thing together, I did run into some problems you could have when buying the Split 3 Nano Lite. This camera does not have mounting options. When you buy the Mobla 6 HD and you convert one into this, you get this camera and it has an adapter to mount it to the canopy. But when you just buy the Split 3 Nano Lite, it doesn't have mounting options, it doesn't have mounting holes and it doesn't come with the adapter to mount it to a canopy. So you could be facing with some problems to mount it to something. I do believe Runcam makes different versions of this camera that do have mounting options. The width of this adapter is 14 millimeters. I've also cut open my canopy. That's for different reasons I'm gonna talk about in my next video. But if you do this mod to your canopy, I'm pretty sure of it, you can mount almost any size of lens in there as long as the body of your camera is 14 millimeters. I've also added some Kapton tape to keep electrical noise away from the FC board. And I've also added a small piece of foam right on top of the microphone, which is connected to the DVR board. I just wedged it in there and I'm hoping to make the sound that it's recording actually usable instead of just ear destroying high pitched noise. I'm really excited to go out and fly with this little whoop and try it out, see how it flies now. But the weather is pretty bad lately and it's going to be pretty bad for the rest of the week. Once I get a chance, I'm going to go out and fly this thing and put up another one of my canopy cruising videos. I would like to give you my beta flight settings, but it doesn't run beta flight anymore. I have changed most of my whoops to emu flight because I've noticed emu flight just works a whole lot better on whoops, well in my opinion at least, than beta flight. Usually emu flight stock even works pretty good and there's a ton of presets in emu flight. You can easily find a preset that really works for you and that's actually what I do lately. I just flash my drones to emu find a preset that works for me maybe tune it a little bit more if i feel the need to but usually i just keep it as is and it flies great i hope guys i really helped you out with this video if you got any questions or comments just leave them in the section down below i will try to answer as many as of them as i can if you liked it give me a thumbs up maybe even subscribe see you on the next one take care guys